Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Star Alliance International Corp. It trades on the OTC pink sheets under the symbol STAL and is a worldwide holding company based in Nevada. It owns valuable mineral assets in the U.S., Honduras, and Nigeria, as well as exciting eco-friendly technologies. Star's prime mineral resources are gold, silver, and lithium. In addition, Star is targeting the acquisition, exploration, and development of mining properties containing rare earth elements. Please welcome its CE, CFO, Tony Anish, as well as the CEO, Weberson Correa. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you today. Thank you. It's a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you uh, for the invitation. It's great to participate here with you guys today. Um, so I'm going to jump at uh, our presentation now. Uh, first slide, you can see uh, we're Star Alliance International Corp. Our symbol is STAL, S-T-A-L. I'm going to jump into uh, an introduction where... We're an acquisition and mining production company that mines for gold, silver, lithium, and other rare earth minerals. In addition to mining, we find and develop innovative new technologies which are eco-friendly, and in the case of Genesis, will cause a tectonic shift in the way of precious metal extraction, processing, and imagine uh, and operated. The unique procedure used by uh, the Genesis system for extraction of precious metals and will modernize the gold and the precious metals recovery process, provide stall with a significant better yields with little to no hazard waste uh, and pollution environment. We will continue to target and acquire other exciting technologies that improve our lives. Our Genesis system will make projects that were previously economically unfeasible to profitable enterprises through higher yield and lower cost. Our ability to find these innovative technologies and develop them makes us leading innovator in the industry right now. Tony? Yeah, and uh, we will explain a whole lot more about the Genesis system a little bit later. Um, that is a very exciting project. But right now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Troy mine. Um, this was the first asset that Star Alliance acquired back in 2019. This property has 78 mining claims. It covers uh, 4,800 acres. It, it has eight major production shafts, and there are about 17 portals on the property. Um, the mine was originally mined and active uh, back in the 19th century, in fact, all the way to the early 2000s uh, when operations ceased. At that point in time, due to some other issues that uh, with prior owners, a valuation was done on this property. That valuation, there was one done by Bear Del Bear, and then it was followed up by a gentleman named Robert Garcia, who provided the court at the time with an appraisal that showed that there was approximately 2 million ounces of gold in this mine. Current valuation would put that over $4 billion. Now, when we acquired this mine, we were well aware of this because the historical documentation that we obtained with the mine um, went back uh, almost 100 years. Um, so we've seen the areas when it was mined, um, when it was stopped, and this appraisal, of course, was done after mining had stopped. The the beauty of this property when we acquired it is it came with equipment that's at the mine head and the equipment included some some major pieces of equipment including ball, ball mills and storage facilities and various um, generator um, so effectively once we start production there again we have virtually all the equipment that we need to get the mine going. We will, of course, need to spend a little money, but this equipment we have inspected, it's in immaculate condition. And um, with a little bit of money spent on it, will be operational and very quickly. Um, the, 
the beauty of this area is as well that there are roads that have been built in the past that crisscross the property. So we can move between the various shafts very easily. Um, it is in an area uh, that is near El Portal at the base of the Sierra Nevada mother load belt. And as I say, that was first discovered in the 19th century. It is one of three major vein belts where minerals have settled over the years. Uh, it is a very, very exciting project for us. One of the other issues that always gets brought up is the complications of doing business in California. Um, we don't have that problem. This is on federal land. It's under the control of the National Park Service and the Forestry Service. So it, that's where the oversight is. That's where we need to get our plan of operation approved. Um, we have been working very closely with them for the last couple of years, um, almost three now. Um, there have been some delays. The pandemic obviously caused a delay. The fires up in the Sierra Nevada, and of course, recently, the, the really bad weather has delayed us um, a little bit. But we are now on track to work with them to get plan of operation done. And most important of all, to finish off the NI43-101 appraisal um, to bring a very current appraisal uh, that we can add to our balance sheet. That is currently being worked on. Um, it is not finished. We need to uh, raise a little bit more additional funds to complete that particular appraisal, um, but it should not take very long to get that finished. We believe that that will show um, significant amounts of reserves of gold. And based on the prior uh, documentation that we had and the report by Bear Del Bear and by Robert Garcia. It was always the, the exciting project that started the company and got us on the track to looking at other potential opportunities. Um, we believe very strongly about the Troy mine, and we are very excited about the prospects over the next uh, couple of years as we go into production and start producing gold there. I should also add that as well as gold, even though we don't refer to it, there is silver at the mine and it's anticipated that the amount of silver there is in similar quantities to the gold. So um, that is exciting too. Uh, as I say, based on the value of the reserves right now, we estimate that uh, taking into account current value of gold, which is over $2,000, we are looking at in excess of $4 billion worth of resources in that mine. Okay, let me, there are a few pictures that I'm just bringing up um, that shows at the mine. Uh, we obviously have been there, seen this equipment, um, checked everything out, and uh, we expect to start working up there uh, all the time in you know, over the next uh, quarter. Okay, that is the Troy mine. Let me pass you back to uh, Weverson to talk about the Genesis program. Thank you, Tony. So yeah, uh, to start out, we have two um, Genesis machine. Uh, one is the oxide system and the other one is the refractory system. Uh, the oxide system, we uh, focus on processing the regular ore, the refractory system for more complex ore. Um, what are the benefits? Like, what do we get from using these machines, right? And so uh, here are some cost effective. It has lower operating cost than heat bleaching. Uh, we have up to 98% of gold recovery rate, which almost double most mining operating. Uh, extraction time reduced to as low as 24 hours compare with 40 to 120 days. Uh, that's significant improvement. Immediate technical solution to difficulties caused by fine materials and resolve the need to agglomerate. Very big, environmentally safe. To us, this means a lot to our company. 
Uh, it's easy to scale. We could also build in a way where it's mobile. It can be transported easily to a new gold bearing terrains. So let's talk about the, the first one, right? So uh, additional benefits to the system. So the Genesis system accelerate the rate of the solution of gold to a nearly immediate rate, right? And so the standard time of extraction is reduced from 40 or 120 days to 24 hours. Consequently, obviously the cost of production are dramatically reduced. Uh, the system can be processed in its modular size. Any, any amount of um, material can be easily scaled. Beyond the economic advantages, it also provides immediate technical solution to difficult uh, calls by materials and resolves the need of agglomerate, right? So um, versatility, at the heart of Genesis system is a module that makes the system versatile in its relationship with installation, construction, and repositioning. The system conception design and its structural development is innovative solution to successful production. Genesis provide a practical and economical solution that is effective, feasible, and reliable. The area needed to operate a uh, complete module is merely 2,500 square meters, which includes the absorption plant, uh, convenient reduction as compared to heat bleaching. Additional benefits, I'll read some of it. Now we'll share the PowerPoint with you. Um, lower capital investment needs in comparison to a standard process available in the industry. Costs related to mass movement of minerals or are eliminated. Mine tailings can be transported through conveyor belts to any transporting um, area. Improve the rate of extraction, as we mentioned, of up to 98%. Reduce cost of production compared to standard uh, extraction. And obviously, I put this in bold, environmentally friendly. Uh, we highlight this uh, very much so. Uh, module structure system is easy to scale, mobile design to be transported, easy to adapt, lower cost production per ounce. The construction of processing plants from scratch will take about three to six months, depending on the size. Capacity for complete automation, precise control and measurement of recovery of the precious metals. Experiences managing con uh, convenient, conventional mining plants is not required to set up Genesis. Elim eliminates risk of setting up production in none explored gold bearing zones. Genesis is a closed system, eliminating the risk of spillage. Considerably reduces the need for water, making it particularly viable for arid sites. Um, water and chemical agents are all reutilized in the area. I'd also like to share uh, some of the images to what we're talking about Genesis and how, uh, where we came from. And so you can see the final war product, product there. Uh, gold product there. Um, then the Genesis refractory. Obviously, we're pulling out the same results up to 98 transformation rate from double refractory uh, block gold into free oxide gold environment safe. Um, the economic feasible solution for complex low grade deposit, the most cost effective to treat double refractory gold. Here's some more uh, images of, of the Genesis machine with processing site. Genesis is a clean environment, safe, easy to use, low cost, high level gold extraction process that will revolutionize the industry. The Genesis system will help clean, clean up tailings at a very low cost, high profitability. Uh, Genesis will help make non-profitable mines profitable again. Genesis will be the catalyst for explosive growth for our company stall. <laughs> In addition to Genesis, I'd like to show you a project that we've acquired last year. Um, uh, may I, uh, Weaverson, yes. may I just step in just one minute, just from uh, on the Genesis system um, to really make you, you understand this system is unique. There is nothing like it that we've been able to find anywhere in the world. The system uh, has been tested. There's a pilot plant operational right now and it's working very efficiently. One of the biggest uses for this system will be with tailing piles that we can send the machine to and process those tailing pines, piles 
extracting more minerals than was originally extracted from them. It will also do complex ores such as coal. So these tailing piles that are that are up, eyesores all over the country and all over the world, we will be able to clean up with this machine. And we believe the future of this machine is, is just staggering. Um, and we are looking forward to having the report done on the equipment by an independent group. And once we have that report, um, it will confirm everything that we are telling you right now. Um, but we are so excited and building more equipment at this time. Sorry, Weaverson, to interrupt. Thank you, uh, Tony. And actually, uh, I would like to add the current Genesis uh, machine is processing since uh, Q4 of last year, we're processing 6,000 tons uh, per day. And so it's a very, very interesting uh, processing machine. Okay, so um, Stahl acquired fifty-one percent of Compañía Minera Metalúrgica Centro América Comsa, an Honduras corporation, right? So the mines are located on twelve point five mile stretch of the land next to Rio Halland River in central Honduras. Extensive reserves of gold, a minimum of one million ounce, uh, minimum value of one point eight billion, uh, is, is found. Uh, expansion plans for the new mines uh, are, are in place. Part of the process, uh, part of the profits will be used for aid on five local villages that we've identified, revenue generating uh, first quarter uh, 2023. Uh, more or less, uh, give you an, an idea of where we're located, and then I'll be showing you a, a map, on so we could see where it's that's located. Uh, so it's in the city of Choloteca, the fourth largest city in Honduras. It has a wide range of hotels, rental dwellings, as well as a uh, gold supply repair and communication infrastructure there. Uh, the city of Choluteca and the national capital, Tegucigalpa, are joined by 130 kilometers from paved highway. The highway also provides access to Choluteca to Clavos, um, one of the many lodging and agriculture roads throughout the area. Potosi is reached by driving 50 kilometers east on a highway from Toluteca and taking the dirt road to Poteritos, a total of 1.5 hours driving time. The highway has both passenger and heavy transport capabilities. Toluteca is served by 12 daily bus runs. Uh, daily international airline service is available to Tegucigalpa from every uh, country, while Toluteca is served by an airstrip capable of landing a 737 aircraft. International flights can go to Toluteca. A large skilled labor force uh, with some mining experience uh, can be mobilized, uh, mobilized in Honduras, uh, Guatemala, and border with Nicaragua there. It's easy to uh, mobilize them. So I'll show you maps so you have a, a general idea of where we are within the scope of um, Honduras. And um, this is actual pictures from, from the mine where we purchased. With that in mind, um, we have the next project. Uh, I'll pass it back to Tony. Magma. Yeah, this uh, last part of our company is somewhat outside of the mining arena. Um, however, the technology we felt was so incredible and it is patented that we felt it was uh, an operation that we needed to get involved with. Um, Baratex is a product that is made out from uh, volcanic rock. The volcanic rock is melted and formed into fibers. Those fibers make various products um, and, and can replace many products that are in use today. Things like fiberglass, uh, carbon fiber, steel, Kevlar, aluminum, wood. This product when manufactured is, is seven times stronger than um, steel. Uh, it is obviously stronger than wood. Um, it has more stopping power than Kevlar. Uh, it, the product itself, it is almost indestructible. Um, and it is also biodegradable. 
So again, it fits into our our view of the of of being eco friendly. Um, the as an example, using using this product will save rainforests because we don't need the wood. We can replace wood with this. Um, the, the, the use of it in carbon fiber instead of carbon fiber, it is a much safer product to make and manufacture. Um, it doesn't burn at any level. At about 1200 degrees centigrade, uh, Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, it will melt. But the product itself, as I say, is almost indestructible. It can be used in multiple uh, things. As in, it, in armored cars, you, you can use it instead of steel plates that are used to protect and, and Kevlar plates that are used to protect the people inside them. Um, there are multiple uses, helicopters, as you can see, boats, aircraft, um, steel tubing, uh, there are so many uses for this product. We just felt it was an absolute necessity uh, to be involved with it. As I say, the, the patent is current um, and we have now started to move the equipment to uh, South Carolina where we're going to set up manufacturing and a lab. We are talking to various parties about this product and we hope to be have all our samples ready sometime in the um, third quarter of this year and to be putting it out and, and getting orders from it. Again, it's a product that we're excited about. Um, it is something that is unusual um, and we believe will be a strong feature of our company in the future. Okay, um, let me just give you a little bit of information about the company. Star Alliance, we're a 34-act fully reporting company. Um, we have a strong board of directors with varying skills and backgrounds. Um, and the um, currently the company has authorized 500 million shares, issued 209 million and 25 million preferred. Um, there's about 35 million that are free trading at this point in time, and we're averaging approximately 700,000 shares per day. Um, the, I think really to conclude this is to say, you know, we are an environmentally responsible company. We're looking to, um, mine for gold and other rare earth. Um, and to find other eco-friendly technologies within the mining industry and other technologies. Um, we are, again, so excited about the Genesis program because of its environmental friendly nature and the fact that it's so far superior to heat bleaching. Um, we've talked about the companies that we own. Magma International, by the way, is the company that owns the Baratex program. Um, and uh, you've seen the company in Honduras, uh, Troy Mine, uh, and we, as we've said, we are looking at other opportunities as they come available. Um, the stock liquidity is continuing to improve, and once we um, start revenue producing, which will be this year for certain, uh, we believe our, co our company will grow and you will see the impacts on the market. I should add this um, uh, PowerPoint will be available so that you can read through it. And um, please, at any time, don't hesitate to ask us any questions and we will try to respond to you in a timely manner with answers to anything you may, you may need. All right, great job, gentlemen. Are you ready for some questions? Sure. Okay, um, let's just talk a little bit about the share price. Yeah, you know, the board of the company, it feels very strongly about the share price and most importantly about shareholder value. We continue to strive to obtain better 
shareholder value for everybody involved with this company. It's always a little tough on the OTC pink, and particularly as at this time, we aren't revenue producing. But as soon as the revenue begins and we get beyond the problems that have slowed us down in Troy with the pandemic, the fires and the weather and so on, and get production going both in Baratex and at the Honduras mine uh, and with Genesis, uh, we believe that we will see um, that shareholder value improve dramatically. Wonderful. And Phil Hoyt wants to know, when do you expect to start paying dividends? Well, we've, we have said and we continue to say that we will pay dividends every six months. Of course, we have to be profitable. We are hoping to pay the first dividend before the end of 2023. Um, that's our intent and that's our plan at this time. Ernie Moss wants you to explain how... Uh, Talk a little bit about the tectonic shift in precious metals processing and how specifically it's different from other types of processing. The currently most processing of metals is done by some form of heat leaching. Um, this process has been used for many, many years in the industry. There are one or two pieces of equipment out there that do it a little bit differently. The difference between that and Genesis is very simple. Genesis is a closed loop system. It is environmentally safe. It is easy to move, easy to move to different locations to be able to use. The extraction level is up to 98% of, of the minerals out of the rock. Um, it just in every area, it is better um, more efficient, as I say, environmentally friendly than any other system out there today. Wonderful. And uh, Melvin Bass wants to know, how does your processing cost compare to traditional methods? Uh, the cost is considerably less, primarily because the it the reaction to extract the minerals out of the rock occurs as a general rule in less than 24 hours, whereas the other methods are taking up to 120 days. So our costs are very low. Um, the team that is there to help um, manage the equipment is much smaller than uh, any other system. And, you, you know, so overall the costs are considerably less than traditional methods. And Hector Francis says, with regard to your recent funding, how much has been realized and is there a floor on the price? Well, I'm not sure that we can talk about the floor on the price because, you know, the market somewhat controls um, what is going on. Of course, we believe the price is lower than it should be. Um, but I'm not sure that we can control that except to get out information that we can put out to the public as soon as it becomes available. And um, I think as that information comes out over the next month or two with the NI 43101s being completed and we can actually put those numbers on the balance sheet, I think everything will change. As far as funding is concerned, we announced recently that we are filing um, an S1 registration to raise some funds, and that is very close. Uh, we are also looking at other opportunities for funding um, to move the company along as quickly as possible. Uh, we have a question from Mike Cohen regarding the Troy mine. Can you talk about the terms of the acquisition? Is it a stock or a cash deal? How much of each, and has it been fully acquired? The answer to the end question is, yes, it has been fully acquired. It was both stock and cash. It was 500,000 cash, and we issued um, 1, uh, 1, sorry, 880 um, million, so 1.8 million shares, preferred shares that convert to common shares at two common for everyone. 
So we end up when, when they're all converted with about 3.7 million additional common shares. And uh, one more question about the Troy from Cody Hill. Uh, when do you expect production to start on Troy and what do you need as far as money? Um, as far as the mine is concerned, I mean, we are looking to get it into production this year. Um, the, the things that we want to do first is the NI43101. Um, and once we finish that, uh, we will be in the process while that is going on of putting together the plan of operation so that we can start it. As far as money is concerned, we are looking for up to about $2 million to get this thing actually operating. And uh, it will require a little bit more money than that as we open more and more portals. Um, but to get it started, approximately $2 million, that will include the NI43101, improving the road, um, uh, going through the equipment and making sure it's all operating, uh, getting a team out there, and, and starting. Um, but again, we have to also get the plan of operation approved. Um, we've worked so closely with the, uh, with the federal agencies that we believe that process will be, I don't want to call it easy because nothing is easy, but because we are very close with them, working with them, um, we believe that it won't be too difficult a job to get finished. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for answering all these questions. We have more questions for you, but we are out of time. So we'll send you these questions. You can answer on your own. And we would love to have you back in the future to give us some updates. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Okay, everyone stay with us. We'll be right back with our next presenter.